Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Yang. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're new, I make videos based on my experience as a biology tutor, and I hope that my videos will be able to satisfy your curiosity appetite, whether you're young or old. And with that, let's dive right in. In this video, I'll describe my 387% paper gains for holding onto beam therapeutics stock. Specifically, why I bought their shares, what I intend to do with my positions, and my guess on how the technology will fit into the future. If you stay till the end, I'll tell you how this week's video will segue into next week's. The most important reason why I bought into Beam Therapeutics is the sound scientific fundamentals underlying the company. I find it superior to generation 1 companies like... <laughs> Let's continue. Let me explain Beam Therapeutics Generation 2 CRISPR-Cas system. First, design the guide RNA to recognize the target sequence with the mutation, followed by Beam's engineered CRISPR-Cas enzyme correcting the base. Then, initiate a single strand break which is safer, and finally, letting the cell do its own correction, restoring it to the glorious functional version. Let me compare generation 2 to generation 1 CRISPR-Cas systems using sickle cell disease as an example. If you want a refresher on what is sickle cell disease, you can click on the i button appearing above right now for my previous video. The main problem with generation 1 gene editing companies is that they don't cure genetic disease. Instead, they try to find a way to improve the patient outcome. But why don't they? Well, it is not a matter of their choosing since the Generation 1 CRISPR-Cas technology is not able to do any form of base editing. This was discovered by Beam Therapeutics scientists and they later fused the base editing enzyme domain into the original Generation 1 CRISPR-Cas. In sickle cell disease, the mutation is located in beta globin gene. This gene contributes to the production of functional adult hemoglobin. Instead of correcting the mutation, the Generation 1 CRISPR-Cas companies targets another gene instead, called BCL11A. This is a type of protein known as a transcription factor. Transcription factors are proteins that control gene expression. They comprise of a DNA binding domain and an activation domain. The DNA binding domain will seek out specific sequences upstream of a gene. If present, they will bind to it. Some transcription factors bind to DNA to block transcription, and these are called repressors. Others bind to DNA to allow downstream gene transcription, and these are called activators. BCL11A is a repressor that blocks transcription of gamma globin gene and prevents fetal hemoglobin from forming, and this occurs as the fetus matures switching to adult hemoglobin. So, generation 1 CRISPR-Cas enzymes target the re-expression of fetal hemoglobin by causing deleterious mutations to arise at BCL11A gene so that the repressor no longer works. First, we only have a few handful of transcription factors and they are there for a reason. There may be other unknown functions of BCL11A if we were to introduce non-reversible mutations to this gene, it may lead to a loss of other functions. Once the treatment has occurred, there's no turning back. Second, the original mutation in beta globin gene is still present and in addition, we are adding more mutations into a genome. Shouldn't we be doing as little as possible to it? Third, fetal hemoglobin is switched off for a reason because the oxygen affinity is higher than adult hemoglobin, meaning it will bind to oxygen more tightly and not readily give it up. Whilst this is better than sickle cell disease, this does not fully solve the problem. I suspect even though patients may have improved quality of life, they will still not be able to do strenuous activities as a result of the treatment. In contrast, Beam Therapeutics second generation CRISPR-Cas system does not contain any of these concerns. That is what gets me so excited. And we're not even done with the bad news from generation 1 CRISPR-Cas systems yet. Another problem is that generation 1 CRISPR-Cas enzymes cut both strands of DNA. In the scientific circles, we know this is a bad thing as the repair mechanism for such breaks are highly error-prone. There are possibilities the repair mechanism at 
adds the segment of the DNA that is broken onto another chromosome. This may create a translocation mutation in the process. Again, this is an issue that BIM's version doesn't have, since it only does single-strand breaks. In fact, Arc Invest has been quietly reducing their position in Generation 1 CRISPR-Cas companies in their Arc G ETF. Whilst CRISPR Therapeutics was a long-time top 3 company holding in 2020, at the time of making this video, it has fallen out of top 10. Even though I'm sitting on paper gains of over 400%, I'm hunkering down and not selling any of it. Since I went in on the stock in 2020 at the price of $25, and then subsequently at $23, the price has shot up to the moon. This is not helped by the fact that ARK Invest recently trumpeted the potential of the sector, creating intense interest. Right now, I'm a hodler, not a buyer. If there are external factors such as the failure or success of clinical trials of Generation 1 CRISPR-Cas companies, I will buy more. And if I do, I'll definitely let you know. I see this company generating outsized returns in the future. And by future, I mean the next 10 years. Since this is the early days of the technology, anything can happen which is why it does not exceed 10% of my entire stock portfolio. Speaking of which, are you interested in the rest of my holdings? When the first clinical trials are successful, there will be a mad rush to solve other genetic diseases. This will cover anything from monogenic to polygenic diseases. And by doing so, improve the lives of diseased individuals who are suffering endlessly and in many cases, followed by premature deaths. Beyond that, I suspect the technology will next be used in smaller genetic problems that's not associated with disease. For example, there is the phenomenon of polydactylil. This is the existence of an extra finger or toe. It does not affect normal functions, neither does it result in medical conditions. But there is a heavy social stigma, especially between mating partners. The moonshot idea is for the technology to be used in germline cells in humans. Germline cells are found in the reproductive organs in humans, which will develop into gametes that will form the next generation. If this can be applied there, then the genes will not be inherited in the next generation, solving monogenic diseases at the root of the problem. Finally, after that, the technology will go mass market. And by that, I mean making genetic cosmetic changes to the germline cells so that offsprings can manifest a certain preferable trait, also termed designer babies. In fact, back in the 90s, there was a cult film starring Ethan Hawke, Jude Law, and Uma Thurman titled Gattaca, showing this form of dystopian reality. Interestingly, the title of the show bears the four nucleotides of DNA. I bet that some of you didn't know that. Now that we have come to the end of this video, next week I'm going to talk about why I don't invest in ARC G ETF and how to build your own biotech stock portfolio. And with that, I thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. You've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.